Well, you know what? I heard. <laughs> I think God and Moses both just have enormous respect for each other. Come live with me. White gladiator has that same Look, the judges are not. Even the Egyptian judges are impressed. Until recently, you claimed that the earth revolved around the sun. Welcome to History Bites. I'm Rick Green. Today, if you're unhappy with your wages, you go on strike. If you don't like your leaders, you vote for the opposition. If you disagree with your church, you switch religions or start your own. But back in the late 18th century, going on strike wasn't fashionable. Voting was unheard of and the church wasn't open to suggestions. So French citizens tried something that had worked in America, a revolution. They stormed the Bastille, then removed the king and queen, starting with their heads. Unfortunately, after eliminating the old monarchist government, they didn't have a single idea about how to replace it. They had lots of ideas, conflicting ideas. This led to bickering and dozens of executions a day. By 1793, the Great Terror was in full swing and no one was safe. If only television had been there to show people fighting over everything with a show about nothing. <laughs> Oh, hey, George. Jerry? So, how to go with Marie? Best sex I've ever had. <laughs> Better than the whores of Toulouse? Amateurs! Really? Jerry, this woman is like a wild animal from the jungles of America. <laughs> Problem is, Marie's animal instincts only come out after you get her excited. Well, as far as I understand it, that's usually the rule, George. Even in Toulouse. Yeah, but the only thing that excites Marie is... Watching an execution. The guillotine turns her on? Chop, thud, dummy stud! Well, with the reign of terror in full swing, you're gonna get at least a dozen chances for a more every day. Believe me, I know. I've never had it so good! <laughs> uh, don't you think it's kind of strange? Well, sure, I mean, connecting a public clinical execution to sex is clearly abnormal. Then again, she is dating you. His songs of liberty and revolution have inspired chaos and anarchy. Remember? I knew a man bourgeois and he'd run from you. In fancy shoes, with powdered face and puffy shirt and breech pants. And a wig from Toulouse, King. You'll be a goner soon. Your head on a pie. We were this close when they guillotined the girl and would a jump on a rat. Charlotte Corday? Yep. Smart girl. Getting close enough to a leader of the revolution to murder him. In his own bathtub. I heard she was nice looking, too. Not so nice with the inside of a neck showing. Oh, yeah! Have you got gold, silver, diamonds? Then sell them to me! I'll pay you a fraction of what they're worth, and then I'll smuggle you out of France! If you're a desperate despot, let me profit while you scoff it! Oh, yeah! Paris, a city of chaos and revolution. People take from the rich and give to the poor. Only to then kill the rich by drowning, shooting, or... The heads of the country fall to the blade. No neck is safe. Power to the people. The upper classes are stripped naked and drowned in rivers. Priests are assaulted and forced to renounce their beliefs. Armed mobs meet out random punishment. I love this town. Before the revolution, France had had a kind of parliament called the Estates General. It was made up of three groups, or estates. One group represented the nobles, one the clergy, and the third estate represented ordinary people. The problem was that the nobles and the clergy could gang up and outvote the ordinary people. So the ordinary people felt cheated. They then gathered together on an indoor tennis court and drafted a new constitution, the Declaration of the Rights of Man. That got the tennis ball rolling, and before long the monarchy was over. Game, set, and match. 
My, my business is ruined, Jerry. It's, it's ruined. I finally got that ship and uh, tennis rackets and all the aristocrats who play tennis have been guillotined. <laughs> Not quite the slice they were looking for. <laughs> yeah, these days tennis courts are just used for revolutionary meetings. Huh? You must have heard about this. When the commoners of the National Assembly were locked out of the meeting of the bigwigs, the Estates General, they stayed on the tennis courts and took the tennis court oath, the oath that led to the new constitution. Hey, she just might be onto something. <sighs> How about it? Shops! Brother Chop's travel and guillotine show. Tie up the babies, behead the old ladies. Everyone's dead, everyone's head. Do you guys want to go see revolutionary speakers at the coffee shop tonight? They're discussing Thomas Paine's theories on the rights of man. Sorry, I'm meeting Marie and talk just doesn't do it for her. Come on, Jerry, it'll be great. Nah, those public speeches are boring now. Everybody's so scared of road fairs committees to speak their minds. Besides, I, I gotta break up with Juliet. Juliet? Isn't she the one whose father's on Robespierre's Committee for Public Safety? Yep, the driving force behind the revolution. Wow! I thought you liked her. Well, she's nice, but she gave me this not puffy shirt. She wants me to wear it. A not puffy shirt? <laughs> Who wears a not puffy shirt? Exactly. She claims it's what the peasants have always worn, so now everybody's doing it to show support for the revolution. And anyone who wears a puffy shirt is counter-revolutionary. But I wear a puffy shirt! <laughs> How could anyone think I'm counter-revolutionary? I don't even know what the revolution is for! How can I counter it? <laughs> with revolutionary searching everywhere, you can't take it with you, and you can't go yourself! So sell it to me, and I'll help you flee! Oh, yeah! I can get you across the border, across the channel, or over the Alps to safety! <laughs> Jerry, I'm tired. Maybe we should, you know, go to... Oh, actually, Juliet, I've been thinking. You know, you're very politically active. Of course I am. This is a very exciting time for me. You know, we're ending the tyranny of an ancient regime and starting up a new republic. I know, and all that republican regime stuff is all very important. But just not to me. <laughs> and on top of that, this not puffy shirt you gave me, well... I, I can't wear it, so I'm thinking it would be better if we could this just... This is about the revolution, isn't it? What? You don't care about the Republican. That's why you won't wear the not puffy shirt. No! I can't wait to tell my father about your counter-revolutionary plot. What? What? I, I don't have a counter-revolutionary plot. Well, weren't you just trying to break up with me? No, 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 no. All I was saying was I thought it would be better if you could tell me more about the new Republican plans, so I would become more interested in it. Oh. Yeah. And the not puffy shirt, well, I can't wear this, cause, well, it's not my size. Jerry, I'm so sorry. Can you ever forgive me? Of course. <laughs> I'll pick Christopher Lloyd to block. Okay. At the execution of Louis the 16th, what was the first reaction of those closest to the guillotine? Ah, I would assume their first reaction would be, uh, yuck! <laughs> no, 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 no. I would say their uh, first reaction would need to, uh, uh cover their eyes with their, uh, handkerchiefs. I'll agree. I am sorry, but you're on the right track. They did use their handkerchiefs, but they ran forward to dip them in his blood as a souvenir. So circle, get the square. Oh, hey, George. Jerry, uh, oh my God. You're not kidding about that not puffy shirt. It's like not even an iota puff on the whole thing. I know. No wonder the peasants are miserable. So you didn't break up with Juliet, huh? No, well, I tried, I tried, but you know, her father's on the Revolutionary Tribunal, and you know what that's like now. You get a few people who tell a few tales about you, sploosh, off goes your head. First tales? It's the only punishment they're allowed to give out now. Death. It's all or nothing. I mean, you'd think there'd be some kind of middle ground. 
You know, fingers, arms, and nose maybe even, for those people who are only a little bit counter-revolutionary. Nope, it's all about the heads with these guys. Heads, Jerry, guillotine, guillotine, guillotine! Stay tuned as the French Revolution spins out of control. Brother Chops travel and guillotine show. By the year 1793, French revolutionaries wanted to get rid of any and all remnants of the previous administration by every means possible. One revolutionary leader, Maximilien Robespierre, extended this out with the old and in with the new to anything he disliked about the old system. This included the French language, the calendar, the tax system, the theater, even the national costume. Oh yeah, and he wasn't too keen about this whole idea of God. I got it, Jerry. Oh, I'm sure it's nothing an enema and a good bloodletting won't cure. <laughs> this idea is gonna make me as rich as the king if uh, he hadn't been executed. My partner and I only need one thing. Ah, oh, forget it, Kramer, I'm broke. Your partner? Hello, Jerry. Hello, I'm Nouveau. We don't want your money, Jerry. We just want the help of a good friend. But maybe we need to tell that girlfriend of yours about your love of puffy shirts. All right, all right, what's your harebrained scheme? Okay, you know how Robespierre introduced a new official religion last month, the revolutionary approved religion? New religion? Oh yeah, that's right, Catholicism is out, George. It's all the supreme being now being. Well, Robespierre wanted to unify all the people with this new state religion. He explained it all last weekend at the Festival of the Supreme Being. This Supreme Being is brand new and already has his own festival? Oh, it's a whole new ballgame. No priests, no church hierarchy. Eliminate the middleman. That's right. No dogmas, just the new Supreme Being. No dogmas? I like dogmas. What kind of religion has no dogmas? The cult of the Supreme Being, George, he's so supreme. He doesn't need dogmas. But we already have a Supreme Being. I'm comfortable with our old Supreme Being. You can't just introduce another Supreme Being. Exactly, that's what the Jews said 1,800 years ago. Well, I don't like it. I find the whole thing very confusing. Exactly, and we're gonna turn that confusion into prophets. Well, prophets and religion do go together. <laughs> we're gonna be rich, rich, rich. All right, all right, get to the point already. The point, Jerry, is this. What is this? A tennis racket? Painted gold? It's an icon, Jerry. A symbol of the new revolution. The tennis court was where the new constitution was started, right? New constitution, new government, new religion. <laughs> I thought this new religion was supposed to eliminate superficial things like icons. Come on, Jerry. Every religion needs icons. These rackets will be the crucifixes of the 19th century. They'll be hanging around every neck in France. You're a genius, Kramer. <laughs> Supreme being, you've replaced my cross of wood. I've been inclined to believe you're just as good. Now forget it, forget it. I don't want to get involved in this racket, racket. You must. You're going out with the daughter of one of these guys on the Committee for Public Safety. So? If you can get her to wear one of these, they'll start selling like hotcakes. <laughs> you want me to get Juliet to wear this stupid thing? <laughs> All right, I'll do it. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. There's an extra there for her powerful dad. <laughs> nice shirt. Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> off with those unsightly tummy bulges or off with your head. Off with those flabby thighs or off with your head. Now you can be sans culette and sans calories. Don't let him eat cake, get him sweat to the oldies. I distinctly heard it. He muttered under his breath, noble. You're crazy. No, I'm not. I asked him, am I in one of the committee's death lists? And he goes, no. And then he adds, it's true, no bull. Get it, no bull? I mean, he's taunting me. Max, you, I've seen the list, you're not on them. Trust me, why would you be? You're not rich. You don't have to actually be rich. I mean, even a suspicion of personal value is enough for these guys. And if you look rich or sound rich, that's why I started to walk around in dirty underwear. 
eliminate the word taffeta from my vocabulary. But you weren't part of the old regime. Remember how the white powdered wigs and makeup gave you a reaction? Oh, yeah, the uncontrollable drooling, bloodshot eyes. I look like the lead character in a Marquis de Sade novel. You look different. <laughs> Is your hair less puffy? <laughs> I'm Jean-Jacques Danton. Today, we are coming to you from Montmartre. We are here hoping to find some valuable artwork, some fancy furniture, expensive clothing, and sculptures, which our experts will confiscate as being counter-revolutionary. And of course, the surprised owners will be carted off down Rue Saint-Honneur to the guillotine. Uh, uh, I found it. I, Is it right? Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it was when I helped raid the house of a rich noble. I, I took it. <laughs> Please, oh. it's a contribution to the revolution. This is very nice, very nice yes. indeed. Yes. yes, there are a lot of these around now. Ooh. Yes, but this one is uh, quite unique, actually. This oh. is uh, Louis the Sixteenth, oh. the original. Wow. And yes, oh. yes, actually, there's only yes. one of these ever made by Louis the Fifteenth and his wife. Wow, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. As for yeah. price... I don't know. The shirt is great. I love the shirt. Yeah. Pants. <laughs> my pants? What's wrong with my pants? Sans culottes look is what's in nowadays, Jerry. Long pants. Sans culottes? Long pants? Like the peasants? Yes, Jerry. The peasants make up the majority of France and the revolution. But my shins are my best feature! <laughs> I don't know. They look kind of bony to me. Hmm? Besides, short pants are counter-revolutionary. Oh, wow. I'm no counter-revolutionary. And to prove it, I got a little something for you. A tennis racket to commemorate the tennis court oath. I love it, Jerry. You do? Mm. Here's another one. When we return, all's well that ends well when there's no one left to execute. With powdered face and puffy shirt and breached pants. Like many of the later communist revolutions, the French Revolution became less and less about the enemies we are overthrowing and more about the enemies in our midst. They began to execute fellow revolutionaries known as Girondins and Jacobins for being too radical or too conservative. It was a messy business and a dangerous precedent. What did your women's revolutionary group do? <laughs> the Republican government had already fixed the price of bread, so we didn't need to loot any grocery stores. We got so angry, we became a mob and started raiding again. But the grocery prices were already fixed. Right. So we raided Francois's shoes. Look at these, Jerry. Five sous. Well, vive la revolution. Thank Robespierre for affordable footwear. You didn't hear? They arrested Robespierre. Really? They were already fed up with the reign of terror stuff. And then he showed up wearing this snowshoe around his neck. Snowshoe? Yeah. First he wants us to wear long pants and tight shirts in the middle of summer. And now he wants us to all carry around snowshoes? The committee said, that's it. This guy's gotta go. Was that snowshoe like a tennis racket? Uh, yeah, maybe. He's getting executed today. Because you weren't there, your brother saved all those sailors and was promoted to captain. And your parents became wealthy and purchased titles, petty nobles. And Zuzu married into royalty. That's why your family was rounded up, George, and guillotined. All because you weren't there to keep them in poverty. Clarence. Yes, George? Where's Mary? Please, Clarence, tell me where she is. You're not gonna like it, George. Where is she? She's a revolutionary. She's one of the marvelous ones. Le, Le Marvius? She's part of those women who dress in Grecian tunics so you can see everything? I told you you wouldn't like it, George. She's sans culette and sans underwear. Where is she? She's just closing down the library permanently with a torch. Book burning? 
Mary's part of a book burning mob? Without you there to marry her, there was no one to prevent her from becoming liberated. I'm I'm sorry, George. He ain't headless. He's my brother. I couldn't do it, Jerry. Why? I met Marie at the Place de la Revolution. We were like this far from the guillotine. Hey, splattering distance. The executioner waves the head around like a like a trophy. Got me right on my new vest. Of course, this only gets Marie more wrapped up. So we go back to her place and I got nothing going on. I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it? I couldn't do it. The trade winds were blowing, but the main <laughs> sail just wouldn't go up. I feel there's an elixir for that now. I kept seeing that bloody head leaking like a rotten tomato. <laughs> and he lost this. Without his head, it just slipped off. Kramer's tennis racket. But I gave that to Juliet. And you mean her father is... Robespierre! <laughs> you mean he was Robespierre? Wow. Right. Like, you know what this means? It means the reign of terror is over. I know. No more living in fear. No more bogus trials. No more executions. And I can wear short pants and puffy shirts again. <laughs> and I guess it's over with Marie. Come on, George. We'll still execute criminals and traitors. Ah, who am I kidding? Every time I look at Marie, I still see Rose Pierre's head. <laughs> I just hope something good can come from the end of the terror. Leave the revolution. Tennis, anyone? Tennis? There he is. Huh? The counter-revolutionary side. The smoke show. When's that time again? Uh, Rose Pierre. No. Get it! Hey. A lot of good came out of the French Revolution under Robespierre. Prices and wages were regulated to fight poverty. Three years of education became compulsory. French slaves were freed. But folks gradually realized Robespierre was just another tyrant, and he was arrested. When a rescue effort failed, he put a pistol to his head and only shot his jaw. Perhaps in an effort to ease his pain, rivals removed the source of his discomfort, his head. Today, Robespierre is remembered as a hero of the revolution. He's a prominent figure in French history. But as he learned, when the guillotine chops, history bites. I've looked at mobs that way. Money talks. But it don't sing and waltz and it don't walk. And long as I am part of the mob, I'd much rather be forever in trousers. I'm not a man who likes to loot. But I never cared for the risk of looting alone We are